I'd like to give a little context to um, a perspective that God uses in order to teach us what's happening in the end times, in order to teach us what's happening in our covenant. In the book of John, Jesus said to the apostles, the harvest is white, but the workers are few. And so at that time, there were people who loved God, and the people who loved God are those who were given a softened heart to be able to recognize Jesus when he was here. This is, by the way, not about ethnic Jews or um, any other ethnicity. This has nothing to do with ethnicity. The first Christians were actually Jews. So don't twist this up in your head because I hear people, I, on one end, I hear people thinking, oh, an ethnicity is the, these are the chosen people. And then on the other side, I hear anti-Semitic sentiments regarding ethnic Jews. And neither of those perspective is, perspectives is right, guys. So if that's you, please correct yourself. So Jesus made this statement to the apostles, the harvest is white, but the workers are few. And at that point, those apostles were going to go out and they were going to talk to the Israel. That's what Jesus came for, the lost tribes of Israel. Unstable people misconstrue that language all the time. But Jesus said it when he was here. He said, I'm here for the lost tribes of Israel to go uh, preach to the lost tribes of Israel. What were the lost tribes of Israel? If I say to you, man, you're lost. Do you understand my language? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You're not getting it. That's what Jesus was talking about. But I see, you know, like on YouTube, I've seen people say, where are the lost tribes of Israel? <laughs> that would be you, buddy. You're not getting it. it. Has nothing to do. It doesn't necessarily at that time it did have to do with a particular ethnicity. But today, with salvation being extended to the Gentiles, when you become, when you are engrafted into the Commonwealth of Israel, you become of the tribes of Israel. You become a spiritual Jew. A Jew is one who is circumcised in heart from the sinful flesh and the world. So if Jesus were to say, today, I'm here for the lost tribes of Israel, he would be talking about Gentiles as well. Now, there's something that God, he talks in all of these different ways. We've taught, we've spoken about the mark of the beast being in your heart. It is that representation, as we saw in Ezekiel, of that cross to Tammuz that is the representation of counterfeit Christianity. God never told you to set up an image. He told you not to. And here, counterfeit Christianity sets up an image, and they're like, this is our, our symbol of Christianity. They won't use the word image because the jig is up. But that's what they're saying. This is our image of counterfeit Christianity. If you were to Google the, um, I think it's called the Christus statue in, in Brazil, it would say something similar. This is a statue. It's an image. How much more obvious can you get? But it would say this is a symbol of Christianity throughout the world. No, it's a image, an image in counterfeit Christianity of counterfeit Christianity. So we've talked about that mark of the beast being in your heart. You ingest that cross. That cross is what you're bowing down to in your heart. You are bowing down to the image, guys. If what is in your heart is counterfeit Christianity represented, right, by this image of the cross to Tammuz set up by the Harlot Catholic Church by Constantine the Fate, that is the mark of the beast. Do you understand? The Antichrist is the kingdom of Antichrists, of counterfeit Christianity. Babylon the Great and the prostitutes that bore out of her. They continue in all of these prostitutions, setting up images, little nativity scenes, fake holidays, saying that it's a Christian holiday, Easter, Christmas. Nope, God's holy days are in Leviticus 23. There are no additions to the scroll. Don't tell me that you're celebrating that to Christ because the word says, don't add to what I have commanded and don't take away. So you tell me, are you celebrating those holy days? Oh, but you, instead of celebrating those holy days, you're celebrating Christmas. Give me a break. No. If you love truth, God's going to lead you to truth. If you don't, he's going to deceive you with all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. He will deceive you. He is the one who sends that deception, the great deception, all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. There's something being set up right now. You can see it you know, Christian nationalism, 
the politicization of religion, the religitization, if that's a word, I'm making up a word, the religitization of politics, a fake contrived movement of revival that the word does not talk about. Revival in the word is crossing over from death to life. It is not a hippie movement. It is not Christian Woodstock, mass baptisms, uh, rock concerts that you're lifting up to, not Jesus. I don't know who you're lifting that up to, but not God. Christianity is also not Hollywood, the music industry, these fake churches that have made a marketplace of God, leading you back to the law, disrespecting the sacrifice of Christ by saying, give us tithing. Tithing was fulfilled through the sacrifice of Christ. Look it up. It's always been associated with sacrifice, a tenth of your crop. All right, so we know that God is also going to separate the wheat from the tares. We know that he's going to harvest the earth. What does all this mean? So at that time, when Jesus said that to the apostles, what he was saying is, go and talk to these people who have heard that I was coming. They've been waiting for me to come and let them know that I've come. They're ripe. But what about those who couldn't hear it? What about those who didn't want them, want him? They were also ripe or white. In Isaiah 18, God is talking about this wickedness that's, ta- that's happening in this end time. And he says, all you people of the world, to you who live on the earth, when a banner is raised on the mountains, you will see it. And when a trumpet sounds, you will hear it. This is what the Lord says to me. I will remain quiet and look on from my dwelling place. So he's looking on at what? Well, what just got explained earlier in the chapter is the is what these other these wicked people are doing, sending out messengers, envoys in papyrus boats. Well, let me tell you something that I came across yesterday that popped up on my YouTube and has been popping up on my YouTube, but I just couldn't even believe it. Hollywood is preaching Christianity to us now? Is is that really what's going on? They're preaching Christianity to us through their movies, the music industry, through their lyrics, sharing their testimonies. That's interesting because in my testimony, when God called me to himself, he took the world out of me. He didn't let me stay in my career that was of the world. But, oh, okay, well, I guess you could have your cake and eat it too. It's the take me as I am covenant. You now get to stay in a disgusting, filthy, vapid industry and preach to us what Christianity is. Tell us about your testimony of what God did in you. Completely empty, by the way. Empty, filthy, disgusting. And then you can also have like people like like Jim Caviezel claiming, oh, when Hollywood dropped me. No, they didn't. Last I checked, you're still an actor getting gigs in Hollywood and all of a sudden Hollywood's become Christian and by that they're actors bamboozling people into believing that they represent Christianity. All right. Yeah, anyone could share their testimony, but you guys need to discern whether it's true. You need to go back to God and ask him, is this your handiwork or is this of the devil? You need to test that word that the words that are coming out of people's mouths with the word of God. So this says I will look, I will remain quiet and look on from my dwelling place. He's looking like shimmering heat in the sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. Before the harvest, when the blossom is gone and the flower becomes a ripening grape, he will cut off the shoots with pruning knives and cut down and take away the spreading branches. They will all be left to the mountain birds of prey and to the wild animals. The birds will feed on them all summer, the wild animals all winter. Okay, so... In a previous video, I talked about that. I talked about where that is in history. Where we see that in scripture is when Jesus comes back and he kills everyone with the sword coming out of his mouth and all the birds gorge themselves on the flesh of these kings and generals, all of the people who have oppressed God's people. This kingdom of counterfeit Christianity, this kingdom of the Antichrist. If you're not with him, you're against him. If you are teaching new age garbage and passing that off as Christianity, you're against him. I don't care if you you think you're doing that in the name of Christ. These people are of the Antichrist. These people who are rising right now in Hollywood, in Christian nationalism, those who can't wait to get together and have their little chosen nights and their passion in the Christ nights, those chasing after that falsehood, that false Messiah, they are of the Antichrist. They are many Antichrists. 
They are of that kingdom, and they will persecute God's people during the Antichrist reign in two years, less than two years. In Revelation 14, 15, it says, Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was seated, sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. And another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. Still another angel who had charge of the fire came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle, take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes. So you saw that in Isaiah, the cluster of grapes from the earth's vine because the, because its grapes are ripe. The angel swung his sickle on the earth, gathered its grapes and threw them into the great wine press of God's wrath. Okay. So the word talks about wickedness blossoming. It talks about the harvest being ripe or white. When it's talking about grapes, it's usually talking about the end. It's talking about that final harvest where he he uh, cuts those grapes and he throws them into the wine press of his wrath. Now, let me tell you what's going on right now because I want you to understand what is happening. What is happening before your eyes? No, Hollywood has not gone Christian. Neither has this country. Neither has politics. Neither have the important people of the world. Hello? Have you seen? Have you read the word? Where it says the important, it, it talks about the important people of the world. It talks about the rich. How are you going to tell me that these influential people are Christian? The devil has his counterfeit, guys. And so with the witnesses, this should testify to you of the times that we are in right now. The devil knows the witnesses are here. He knows what's going on. He can see it. He recognizes it. It's unfortunate that God's people don't recognize what's going on right now. He has his counterfeit. So any time that this is happening, that God is doing something, he's going to do a version of it, but it's going to be a deceptive, distorted version. It's going to look like a lamb, but it's going to speak like the dragon. It's going to have the appearance of godliness, but it's going to deny his power. It's going to pretend to be of Christ, but it's going to speak in opposition to Christ. We need to pray for the land. Who says that? Did, the God, did God say that? We need to pray for the land? He said, return to me and I'll heal your land. He didn't say pray for the land. The land hasn't sinned against him. We have. It's going to say things like the price has already been paid. So the way to deal with your depression, your syndrome, is to just believe in the grace that has already been given to you. The salvation that's already yours Never mind working out your salvation. Never mind that the word says you're being saved. Never mind that you have a covenant, a cross to bear, suffering to endure, martyrdom to endure. Never mind all that. It's already been given to you. That way you won't ever get involved in your covenant. You will never fulfill your covenant with that mentality, right? So the devil's going to establish this counterfeit truth, which is obviously no truth at all. It's a counterfeit version of of Christianity. So what does it mean that you're going to be ripe by the end? You will be ripe in whatever you have chosen, guys. You will have blossomed in whatever you have chosen. When you're ripe, when the word says that on the 1290th day, when you see standing in the place that it ought not be, the abomination of desolation, you may not see that with your eyes with your carnal eyes the earth will be ripe wickedness will have blossomed what's in your heart will have taken hold do you understand what's happening right now you're being given an opportunity to choose is this what you want like do you want the falsehood is this what you want you want to entertain yourself with lies about jesus or do you want the truth and by the time you've gotten to that 1290th day when the abomination of desolation is set up in God's temple, were his temple, by the way, when it's set up, you're going to know. You're going to know. Did you see anything change, by the way, like about the time of COVID? Did it become apparent to you who was of God and who's not? Did you see a shift? So would you not see a shift on the 1290th day when the abomination of desolation is set up in the wicked, when they're ripe, would you see that? 
when the word says that during that time, the son of man is going to be revealed and also the man of sin, the man of lawlessness, who is Satan? You're not going to see him with your eyes, but they'll be revealed. So do you think that at that time you're going to know who's of him, who's of Christ and who's of Satan and what spiritual forces have been at play this entire time? Do you think it'll be clear to you? Yeah. When Christ comes like a thief at that time, we are not talking about the resurrection. We're talking about the last 45 days up to the resurrection. That's what we're talking about. When he comes like a thief, is he coming like a thief for those he's going to take in the in the resurrection? No. Listen to what God says. Revelation 3.3. 3. Remember, therefore, what you've received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what time I come to you. Revelation 16, 15, I come like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains clothed so as not to go naked and be shamefully exposed. That's what's going to be happening during those 45 days. So when he's talking in Matthew 24, when he says two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Is he talking about the resurrection? No. Okay, so Kirk Cameron, who promotes this, right? This pre-tribulation rapture. You want to listen to him tell you what the word says? You want to watch those movies in Hollywood and have them tell you what the word says? Because it's pretty hard to get that image out of your mind, isn't it? That image presented by that movie, Left Behind. That image that keeps getting regurgitated by Hollywood. This is not talking about the resurrection, This is talking about the 45 days leading up to it when he comes like a thief to steal, kill, and destroy the wicked. And then guess what? They will long to die, but death will elude them. They will hide out in the caves, but they will not escape his face. You can be spiritually dead and physically alive, can't you? Don't lean on your own understanding about what that means. They will long for death and death will elude them. But as far as spiritual life, they are spiritually dead. They've made their decision and there's no going back. What is happening in you right now as you, if you, are leaning into your covenant and the ministry of Christ? You are becoming ripe. If you think of Christ as the branch and you you as his fruit, or you can also think of, because you're being referred to as fruit and also you are supposed to bear fruit, right? So there's two metaphors going on in scripture. Better be some good fruit, guys. But you as fruit are ripening. And if you're good fruit, then you're going to go through a certain process of ripening. If you've ever had a fruit tree or you've ever tended a garden, then you know that sometimes stuff happens where that fruit doesn't ripen. It falls off the tree before it even had a chance to get ripe. You need to be good fruit. By the time... The fifth trumpet blows in less than two years. People will either have returned to God or they will not. People will not be repenting and turning to him after that trumpet who haven't done it prior to that trumpet, who have not already started that process. Obviously, we're always in a process of repentance with God. That is less than two years away. By the time the forty, the the twelve hundred and ninetieth day from the death of the witnesses occurs, you will be ripe to the point of being able to discern whether you have God in you or not. There are some who will still be here, who will still need to be purified, made spotless, and refined, and tested during that forty-five days. But by the time Jesus comes and the earth is harvested, all will be ripe. It should testify to you that something is going on. Even if you haven't discerned the witnesses, you should know right now that something is going on if the devil is doing this right now and putting his best effort forth to deceive you about what Christianity is, what this covenant is, and what the word says. If he is putting that much effort into this, you should know that something is going on. Something has shifted. When in your life have you ever seen this? How did everybody become Christian overnight? How are there revivals going on all over the world and the Holy Spirit's just pouring out? What's going on there, guys? Discern the times. Discern whether or not I'm a shepherd of God and if what I say is true. Because if what I say is true, nothing else matters, does it? 
Nothing else should matter at this point in history if what I'm saying is true. Not the promotion, not the house, not, not the girl, the guy, nothing. Nothing else matters at this point in history. You think you have time to go pursue a love interest? Time to go and like plan your life? You don't. And if that is becoming a temptation for you, you better take a look at what's going on. You better take a look at what's going on inside of you that the devil is uh, trying to get to you through that, through all these longings and plans and desires, because there is no time for that. Paul was saying it during his time, but I'm telling you right now, there is no time for that. You want to get married and have babies at this time in history? I mean, if God wills it, then by all means, but as far as I can see, it's going to be a lot more painful for you when the Antichrist rises. You are not going to, as Paul said, it's going to be very difficult for you to be able to be single-minded to God. The person who gets married wants to please their spouse, and they are not. it is very difficult for them to be single-minded for God because they're concerned about worldly things. Paul admonished to stay in the position you were in when God called you. I'm saying the same thing to you. There is enough to be done in your covenant right now than to be bogged down and distracted by someone else's stuff, someone else's life. I'm not saying that marriage isn't a beautiful thing. Marriage is a beautiful thing, but it's also going to make your covenant harder. And if these are the things you're concerned about right now, it's going to take longer for God to bring you into position so that you can receive this and just be done with your covenant here. Be used by him because everyone has to serve in his house. It's, it's ridiculous that anybody would think that you're going to go up in the resurrection and become priests of God, but you don't even realize that you're supposed to be serving in his house. There are a lot of people who think that way, who think what I'm doing, oh, that's that's all fine and dandy for Carrie, but that's her role. What what are you talking about? What do you Paul has said that to each is given his task. And in order to enact that task, each one is given a gift. If that hasn't happened, it's gonna need to. How are you going to be in his house when you're not serving in his house? There are no squatters in the kingdom of heaven. Please discern the things that I'm saying. You need to be ripe and you will indeed be ripe, but you need to make the decision about who you're going to be ripe for. Whose mark you're going to have in your heart? Of which kingdom will you belong? Please discern the things that I'm saying with God. Go back and ask him. And if he answers you, then ask him to turn your heart according to what he requires. And don't just say the words, but you need to receive that from him. You need to listen to what he's saying to you.